I'm Eric Fine of 72 PC, and welcome to this week's Quick Hits. This week, we have the big Microsoft acquisition to talk about, Rocket League finally going free to play, and a little bit of Among Us news to get to. But first, I want to tell you about what I'm excited about this week, and what that is, is No Man's Sky. They just announced their 3.0 patch, and this is gigantic. They are actually reworking much of the known system in introducing multiple star systems, different planet types. They've changed up the flora and fauna to where there is now new types of flowers, new types of plant life, new types of animals, new types of insects. Everything has changed. They've even added new physical structures to worlds. Like now there's mountainscapes that are so large you really need exo vehicles to get through. They have new volcanoes that will actually just be on different worlds. Hello Games has done a great job keeping up with this game and adding much of the content that they promised out the gate that was absent in later and subsequent updates. I personally haven't really jumped back into the game since about halfway through the 2.0 update. I never really got to explore the underwater stuff. It didn't interest me as much, but the base building aspect I did get heavy handed with and it was awesome. So I'm really excited to jump back in and see some of these new sites and explore the game and just rediscover what I really loved about this chill exploration game. Well, enough about No Man's Sky. Let's talk about another really big update that recently dropped, and that is Rocket League is now officially free to play. Now, you're probably thinking, Eric, you've talked about this for weeks. Why'd you come back to it? Well, it's actually out now, and the systems are live, and we can get our hands on it. I firsthand have actually jumped into the tournament mode to experience it, and man, it's great. It's fantastic for someone like myself who never really plays in a competitive sense, gets to actually feel a tournament vibe. You feel the, this is our last chance, we lose, we're gone. And yes, that gets your adrenaline going. It makes the game feel more real. It makes you more invested in what you're doing. But outside of just playing in the tournament mode, I was also able to experience part of the market system where you have the different cups that you can buy. And effectively what happens is your different tournament level dictates how many cups are available. From my understanding, there is currently four cups available. I'm only currently sitting at three, so I haven't been able to experience the fourth. But they all give you higher quality items out of the same loot pool. But what most people are finding is that you actually spend all your credits on the lowest one, and you can still get higher tier items as well as you can trade up those items on the way. But that's what I've been doing. Let me know if you guys have been doing anything else to help actually optimize getting some of the better items that are more desirable. Also with this update came a brand new battle pass and a brand new start of the ranked season, which is now being called season one. Uh, there was a soft reset on the MMRs. Everyone lost roughly around 200 MMR. So if you were sitting at roughly a champ one, you probably got taken down to roughly diamond three, diamond two, somewhere in that realm. They also introduced the new challenge system where you have weekly challenges and season challenges. Now the weekly challenges, most people can knock out probably in a day if they want. The new seasonal ones though, they're typically a little longer. I've been playing pretty, pretty heavy since it's came out and I've only knocked out two of the 12 that I have available, I think it is. So there's still plenty to work for as the season progresses. And there's multiple stages that you'll also unlock as you go to give you more challenges as you finish those. Which is good because also with those challenges comes a lot of the XP. There has been some changes to the way the XP is getting paid out. So you're actually getting a little less XP than what you were. So you're going to progress through the Rocket Pass a little slower than what you previously were used to. And the final bit of Rocket League news is the Ramalama event is coming this weekend. And what that's going to mean for all us players is, well, well, there's a lot of little crappy items in my opinion, but you'll get a chance to unlock the battle bus, which will be the second vehicle to use the new Merc hitbox. So get on out there, get the battle bus, and do all those stupid challenges like run these wheels while doing this thing. We're back to that again. Yay. But enough of that. Let's get into a quick hit here with some Among Us news. And really what that is, is that as quickly as Among Us 2 was announced, Among Us 2 has been canceled. They have officially come out and said they are super happy with the amount of growth Among Us has had, but they feel that the better play for them at this time is not to effectively abandon it and make a second one, but to just improve upon the first. So they're going to be improving this game, incrementally making things better, as well as, what I'm happy about, add a new stage. So if you're enjoying the game, stick with it, and there's going to be more to come. And the last bit of news we got for you is possibly the biggest. 
Microsoft made a 7.5 billion with a B dollar acquisition to purchase Zenimax Media. Now to some of you, that name might kind of ring a bell, but you're not quite sure where you know it. Well, that's the parent company to two monster development houses, both id Software and Bethesda. So this gives them the developers who make games such as Elder Scrolls, be it Skyrim, Oblivion, or Elder Scrolls Online, the creators of Fallout, or we can go to an even darker way, and this gives us Doom and Wolfenstein. So this is monstrous for Microsoft, who has been in desperate need of additional first-party games. Right now, we don't know what this means when it comes to first-party titles. Traditionally, when Microsoft has purchased companies like this, they released any titles that they were already working on for multiple platforms. We've seen this with The Outer Worlds when it came to Obsidian Entertainment. Microsoft purchased them while The Outer Worlds was already in development, so they went ahead and released it on PlayStation. So any Elder Scroll titles that's in the work, you will probably see it actually show up on PlayStation. So don't expect that to be exclusive. But anything coming out three, four or five years down the line, yeah, it might be exclusive. But the big deal is this gives them the license to put these things on Game Pass. We might get Skyrim because you know they love putting that everywhere. But we also could end up with Doom 2016 or the new Doom or hell, the very next thing they make. So this is really exciting for especially us PC gamers who've recently adapted to using Game Pass because it's a great value with a lot of games. And really, this is probably going to help them in next gen. Let's be honest, this is giving Halo some more firepower. They can finally come at the PlayStation. That's all I got for the Microsoft front. So I'm just going to get you out here with what I'm seeing as the deal of the week. And with that is, Tom, you're going to love this one. Hitman 2. At 70% off, both the Gold Edition and Standard Edition, this is the perfect time to dive into the franchise if you're like myself and never had. You can either go with the Standard Edition, which is just the Hitman 2 levels, or the Gold Edition, which is Hitman 1 and 2 levels, all packaged into Hitman 2. So, you should go over there, pick it up. I know I am. And with that, that's all I got for you guys this week. So, till next time, game on. <laughs>